my preferred medium for starting seeds is the Oasis Foam. These come in various dimensions. Uh, these are one inch by one inch and a quarter. They come in larger sizes for various uh, applications. But this foam is a non-toxic foam as far as I know. One of the things that people sometimes use or often use actually for starting seeds is rock wool. But I have been in a hydroponic shop when they were unboxing some rock wool and I noticed that the person doing it was wearing a desk mask and I've seen other references to the fact that uh, rock wool can throw off fibers that are not good for you when it's dry so this is a much better choice and I'll put a link to this company in the description this particular sheet when it's full I think does about 104 cubes something like that now when you break uh, this off from the the main sheet you will see that you have this kind of rough edge and this edge projecting from it what I do with this I just take a paring knife an old paring knife kitchen knife whatever and very carefully slice these off and the other reason why I do this is because this size of cube fits very nicely into the two inch net pots that I favor. So then in between the cubes, that ends good. Okay. So that's how I prepare them. I used to leave these whole and I found that once they were soaked, they were kind of a pain in the butt to cut up like this. So. Now I do it this way. Currently the way that I'm putting seeds is these is by using a tweezer. It's a bit fiddly but I've looked at some other things for doing it and this just seems pretty efficient at a small scale. Now what I'm planting today are some um, beet tops. These are called Early Wonder Beet Tops from Johnny's. The virtue of these is that even though they're a beet, they do not produce a big bulb. They produce mostly leaves, which you can cut off and cut again and again uh, to make salads or smoothies and things like that. So this is a very nice plant for hydroponics. Sometimes when I'm doing these things, depending upon what it is, I'll only put in one seed. Uh, kale is an example because it's a very large plant. And if I see that a cube has failed to sprout I will reseed it and hopefully it will sprout you know the advantage of that is that you end up with plants of differing maturity so they will continue to produce over a period of time and that's one thing you want to do with your system is to plant continuously and harvest continuously to know what you can do all year round in a particular situation once I've got them in the cubes and I set them in a recycled Cool Whip container like this. And then I start soaking them very carefully with my hydroponic solution so that this whole thing is really inoculated uh, with all the things that really needs to go right from the get-go. Not just water, but the whole range of nutrients from macronutrients to micronutrients to trace minerals. I put a little bit of amino acids, Bragg's amino acids in this, a little vitamin B1, add a little calcium and magnesium. So it's gotten to be kind of an alchemical brew these days. This current batch of solution is actually made by using some azomite rock, which is a rock from Utah, which was created when lava came into contact with seawater and created a very rich mineral blend. That's why they call it azomite, A to Z. I tried releasing the trace minerals from the stone particles by mixing in some mycorrhiza and some sugar and that did work um, because the EC went up overnight. At the same time I just tried putting some azomite in water and I was pleasantly surprised to find that uh, as a result of that science experiment, it was also dissolving into the water. Now there was residue at the end, but I just threw that 
on my garden outside. So at this point in time, these things are ready to go into the nursery and hopefully in a few days they will start to come up. I do make a little label for the things that go on into the nursery. So this just says beets 4-6. So I know when I started, it gives me an idea on what the germination time is for these things. So this is the current state of the nursery. I'm using these two inch stainless steel pans that I originally got as part of my experimentation with hydroponics and microgreens and things. And these are now becoming my go-to solution for a nursery because as things get bigger, I have more of these pans and I can spread things out. So things like this that are starting to put some true leaves out and so on will have more space. And then for each of the things that are in there, you know, here's several zinnias and some Chinese cabbage. Here's some Moscovich tomatoes, which I've just put in seeds on these because a couple of other attempts with Cal San, uh, San Francisco fog tomatoes have not worked. Winterboard kale, cilantro, chives, chard, collards, a whole bunch of things going on in here. So I just set these in the little old tray. On a daily basis, pretty much, I come in and uh, slosh some water in this tray and then just kind of you know, shake it around a little bit to get a film of water all over the tray and capillary action does the rest. And here are some follow-ups. Uh, I have previously mentioned starting a clove of garlic in some soil in a pot and within a few days time this thing had started to put out roots which I so I then moved it into this quart jar of hydroponic solution. I've also previously mentioned these snap peas which also started to produce nice roots and are continuing to do so. These are taverna beans and I had uh, laid them on some damp napkins for a few days to let the roots start to grow which they did and they are now putting out some roots into the into the, the solution. So second time try seems to be working okay for these things. I hope to have an abundance of snap peas and tavera peas, whatever, growing out of a, a five gallon bucket or something. You know, with hydroponics, because all the water and food is readily available, you can crowd things much closer than you do in a garden. And that is part of what makes hydroponics so productive.